now. Hold on. Three one. This is three one Bravo. You need to push out, and we can light up the building again with the fifty. <laughs> Three Bravo, this is three one Bravo. They are in Mike One Fox. Break. How they built it. Um, said, what were you doing in the cafe? <laughs>
Experts gathered at the Maneuver Center of Excellence to see the latest in robotic technology. But these weren't just any robots, they were unmanned ground vehicles, and they were armed. Today's demonstration, the, the targets were about 150 meters away from the, from the robotic systems. Our requirement will be to employ existing weapon systems. We use the 240 Bravo medium machine gun today, which has effective range much greater than 150 meters. So we want to ensure that whatever system we put on it, it can maximize that weapon's effectiveness uh, and, and is not degraded in any way by the robotic system itself. Although this day boasted a 240 Bravo, these machines are capable of handling a variety of weapon systems that can be changed out in a matter of seconds. Interoperability has to play a key piece because every other technology that is out there it needs to be in the soldier's hands. So if we can provide a platform that can carry up to 20 sensors or different mixes of sensors and be able to operate in the same battle space, it gives that soldier more capabilities to complete his mission or her mission. Not only are these robots lethal, but with remote operations, they're operable from over a thousand meters away, giving soldiers the safety of distance while engaging a target and featuring choices in escalation of force like sirens, <laughs> nerf rounds, and more. This is the basic controller. This is all you need to drive the machine. Um, uh, an infantryman takes about a minute to learn how to drive it. It's just I'm going to drive my little RC car, except your RC car is a thousand pound robot and you can operate it up to a kilometer away. With technology ever evolving, the Maneuver Battle Lab not only looks to define the requirements of robots today, but to help design the robots of tomorrow, as options are limitless to support the lethality, mobility, and protection of soldiers. When do we say we know enough to define what it is we need? So one of our challenges in defining requirements for robotic systems or any, or any combat systems is to define what we need broadly enough to take advantage of evolving technology, not be limited to today's solutions, but again, grow to what's available in the future. By working closely with industry experts, this allows Army officials to understand what is possible today and where it can go in the future. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning, Georgia. Today, what we're doing is a final exercise. For the past six weeks, these Marines of Kilo 35 and McWill have trained to the technologies that we're integrating. So at the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab, we test and evaluate future concepts and technologies. We have a concept-based experiment that we're doing. We have over 40 technologies here in, uh, with the CLT Kilo 35. Some of them range from uh, five unmanned ground vehicles to five unmanned aerial systems. We're looking at technology that reduces logistics, which we have termed logistics demand reduction. Now we have unmanned ground vehicles, which can actually carry 240s and 50 caliber weapon systems. And it can be right next to a foot mobile company. So now we're bringing weapon systems that are not normally foot mobile to the company itself. We have five unmanned aerial systems that we're going to be uh, playing with. One of them is the Black Hornet. It's about four inches long. It is brought down to the squad level. This thing cannot be heard after it goes above 30 feet. So you basically can peek around the corner without the enemy knowing, and you can see what is around the next corner for that squad leader to know. The small quadcopter that uh, had been flying around is called the Instant Eye. It has three cameras that allow it to see straight ahead, 45, or straight down. You can reach out and see what's coming at you and what uh, you can be expecting here in the next 100,000 meters. The 40 technologies that we're experimenting with will make the Marine Corps more efficient, more lethal, and more survivable. So ultimately what we want is the first person or first thing in the door is a robot to get essay into what's around the next corner.
Burning down.